Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 22 of my Ultimate Python 3 tutorial series. In this video, we're going to explore how we can treat functions as objects, which is going to open up a world of possibilities. And on top of that, we'll also explore function annotations. And on top of that, I'm also going to present you with another problem for you to solve. Okay, so what we're going to do here is create a function that is going to multiply a parameter by 2. So pretty simple, you say. Well, by 2, and it's going to receive a value, and it's going to do that. So we're going to say return num times 2. Okay, pretty simple so far. Now, something we haven't done before is we can actually assign a function to a variable name. So we can call our mult by 2 function times 2. What that's going to allow us to do now is to say something like print 4 times 2 is equal to, and then follow that up with times 2 and 4. Okay? And if we run that, you're going to see that it gives us exactly what we thought. All right? So starting off simple, it's going to get more complicated. We're also going to be able to pass it into other functions. So let's create another function here. I'm going to call this do math. And it's going to receive a function plus a number. And now and all this is going to do is return the value that our function is going to create for us. And that squiggly is there because there's no line after it. And now what we'll be able to do is do something like print 8 times 2 is equal to call do math and then pass in mult by 2, our function, and the value of 8. Run it, and we get 8 times 2. Well, let's get rid of this. There's an extra parentheses inside of there. And run it again, and everything works out just like that. So pretty neat stuff. Let's do even more. Let's say we wanted to create a function that returns a function. So I'm going to create another one. I'm going to call this get func mult by number. And what this function is going to do is actually create a function that's going to multiply times the or by the number that's passed into it. So what I'm going to do here is create a dynamic function that's going to receive a value then return that value times the value passed into this function. So inside of here I can say define mult by value and then there say return num times value and then what I can do here is return that whole entire function mult by now what we'll be able to do is we can create something we'll, we'll call this generated func and then call get func mult by number and say that we want it to multiply everything it receives times 5. And then we'll be able to come in and go print 5 times 9 is equal to, and then call generated function 9. And run it, and you can see that that also worked. So pretty neat stuff. And in the next part of the tutorial, we're going to continue doing really cool things like that. We're also going to be able to embed functions inside of data structures. So we'll call this list of funks equal to, and we can say times two and generated func, and then say print five times nine is equal to, and then call list of funks and go and point at a specific function using the index that we have there and pass in 9 inside of it and run it and get it again. So pretty cool stuff and now it's time for you to solve a problem. Alright, so now that you have explored new ways we can use functions, I want you to create a function that receives a list and a function. The function passed will return true or false if a list value is odd and then the surrounding function will return a list of odd numbers. So I taught you everything you need to know to be able to do this, so pause the video, give it a try, otherwise I'm going to solve it for you right now. Alright, so I'm going to create a function, 
and I'm going to call it is it odd. It's going to receive a value and we're going to say if num modulus 2. If you've watched any of the other tutorials you've seen this a couple times. And if that comes back true, uh, true we're going to return false. Else if it doesn't we're going to return true. Okay. Now after we've done that I'm going to define change list and it's going to receive a list along with a function. I'm going to create a list inside of here called odd list. Then what I'm going to do is cycle through our list i in list inside of here. I'm going to say if and I'm going to call function on i. Guess what function I'm going to be using there. If that comes back as true I'm going to add it to our odd list using append. And then after we go through all of those different functions I'm going to return my new odd list. Okay and then out of here I'm going to say a list is equal to range. I'm going to go 1 through 20 and then after that I'll say print change list pass in a list and then pass in is it odd. Run it and you're going to see it takes all of those values and only returns the odd values. All right, so cool stuff. Hopefully you got that right. If not, don't worry about it. Just good job on trying. And now we're going to talk about function annotations. Okay, so it is actually possible to define the data types of attributes and the returned value with annotations. Just be aware, however, that they have no impa impact on how the function actually operates, but instead are for documentation purposes. But nonetheless, I want to cover everything, and so I shall. So let's just call this random function. You're going to define your attributes and then follow that up with it being a string, which is what that just said. We will create age and say that it's an integer, weight, and say that it is a float. And that is how you do it. And then we say that this function is going to return a string. All right, so that's what that means. Now we can print name and then let's do the same for all the other different pieces. So age and age and weight and weight. And then after we do that, we can say return is years old and weighs use format and just say name, age, and weight. And then we can come in and say print random function and pass in Derek 41 165.5 and run it. Whoops, I accidentally threw in some extra parentheses there by accident. And if we run it you can see that it prints out all the individual information as well as the string that we have there. But be aware that you're not going to get an error if you pass in bad data. So if we say something like, well, let's just use the previous thing that we had here. Let's change this. It's expecting a string, right? Well, let's change it to 89. Let's change this to Derek. And let's change this to Turtle. Okay. Run it. See, 89 is Derek years old. So you're not getting an error or anything if you mess it up. Just be aware of that. You're also going to be able to print your annotations. So print random func and follow that up with two underscores and annotations. And you know what those are now that you know about magic methods. And there you go. You can see all that information. String, age, int, and float. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to cover anonymous functions, lambda, map, filter, reduce, and I'll hit you with two more problems. So like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise.